Hello, believers. Today, we are going to work on unit rates. Remember that unit rates are the amount per one. Let's go ahead and fill in our notes first. Unit rate is the amount per one. So examples of unit rates that we see all the time are miles per hour when we're talking about speed, or it could be the cost per one if we're at the grocery store, and so on. When writing a ratio, order matters. We know from our homework that we have to have ratios in order in order for them to be correct. Flipping a ratio backwards means it is no longer the correct ratio. Three, we can use equivalent ratios to help us find unit rate. If I know how much it is for seven apples, then I can find the cost for one apple by dividing. And lastly, when I'm writing unit rates, I should always use labels. This goes back to our second point, that we want to make sure that we're all organized in order to find the correct unit rate. A grocery store is selling loaves of bread at a rate of $5.12 for four loaves. What is the cost for one loaf of bread? So I'm thinking to myself, if four loaves of bread cost $5.12, that means that each loaf of bread, will it be more than a dollar or less than a dollar? It'll be more than a dollar because if each loaf was exactly a dollar, it would cost $4 for four loaves. So because the cost is above $4, I know that my answer should be above a dollar for each loaf of bread. Now for me to figure out the cost per loaf, I'm going to take this information and actually make it into a division problem. I'm going to take my cost, $5.12, and I'm going to divide it by four loaves of bread. Go ahead and figure out how much each loaf of bread is. If four loaves of bread cost $5.12, then that means each loaf of bread costs $1.28. This makes sense because I know that each loaf of bread has to cost more than a dollar. Let's go to the second part of our question. Knowing that all the loaves cost the same amount, what is the price for seven loaves of bread? What would I need to do in order to figure out the cost for seven loaves of bread? I'm going to take the cost for one loaf of bread and multiply it by the loaves of bread that I have, which is seven. What is the cost of seven loaves of bread? Because one loaf of bread costs $1.28, I know that seven loaves of bread will cost $8.96. Go ahead and check your work with mine. Here's the first question you're going to try on your own. Let me read it. John's little brother can ride his tricycle at a constant speed of 100 feet for every four minutes. How far does John's brother travel in one minute? Go ahead and answer the question on your own, and we'll go over the answer in a moment. In order to answer this question, we need to go from four minutes to one minute. So I'm thinking to myself, how can I go from four minutes to one minute? Well, I know that I can divide by four. And in order to keep my ratio equivalent, I'm going to divide by four on the top and the bottom. Four minutes divided by four is one minute, and 100 feet divided by four is 25 feet. Therefore, the distance per minute is 25 feet per minute. Let's look at the next question. There is a typo that I want you to fix. Janet walked 7,920 feet in 30 minutes. She walked at a constant rate. At what rate did Janet walk in feet per hour? While there will be questions like this on the state test where it says miles per hour, we're not going to tackle that today. Instead, we're going to work with feet per hour. There is still something super tricky about this question though. Here's a clue. In order for you to answer this question, you need to know how many minutes are in one hour. If you said 60 minutes, you are correct. Go ahead and answer this question and we'll review it in a moment. Because I know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, I'm thinking how can I go from 30 minutes to 60 minutes? Well, I can multiply my ratio times two. 
When I multiply by ratio by two, I should be able to fi figure out my feet per hour. What did you get? You are correct if you answered 15,840 feet per hour. Now notice, again, I know that this is one hour because 60 minutes is equal to an hour. A lot of kids will get tricked up on that. So if you got it right the first time, really good job. Also notice that when I find the unit rate, it doesn't always mean that I divide. It means I'm finding an equivalent ratio where it's an amount per one. Here's your first problem where you're working all on your own. Go ahead and read the problem. The first thing that you need to figure out is what is it that you're finding here? What is the cost for each meter of ribbon means what is it that I'm going to divide to find the unit rate? I'm going to divide the cost by the meters because I'm looking for the cost for each meter of ribbon. Go ahead and do that now. Let's check for something real quick. If you can buy five meters of ribbon for $4, does that mean that the cost for each ribbon, each meter, will be more than a dollar, less than a dollar, or exactly a dollar? It'll be less than a dollar for each meter of ribbon. So when you do your division, you should have automatically seen that I cannot make a group of five out of four. And because I'm talking about dollars, I know there's a hidden decimal here that I can work with. So it's less than a dollar for each ribbon. I can then put a zero here and continue to solve. Five goes into 48 times. I subtract, I get zero. So right now I have an answer of 0.8. What does 0.8 mean? In the context of this problem, 0.8 means $0.80 per meter of ribbon. Really good job on this one. This is pretty tricky. Please make sure that you're dividing the right thing by checking for what is it that I'm finding the amount per one. I'm looking for one meter in this situation. Go ahead and read this question and answer the question of how many beads are in one inch of string. We'll go over the answer in just a moment. Whenever I solve a ratio problem, even a unit rate problem, I'm trying to figure out what do I do to the entire ratio in order to get my new equivalent ratio. That's why I keep the value of the ratio the same. So how did I go from three inches to one inch? I divided by three. So I need to do the same thing on the top of my ratio. 12 beads is equal to three inches, so four beads will be equal to one inch. Please update your work if you have any mistakes and move to the next question. This is one of the trickiest questions that you have today. Go ahead and read the problem. Now for this question, we need to fill in the blanks to make the statement true. So it says for every one cup of tomatoes, there are blank cups of olive oil. Hmm. The ratio of the cups of tomatoes to olive oil is seven to four. So I know if there's one cup of tomatoes, there should be less than a cup of olive oil because there are more tomatoes than there is olive oil. How could I figure this out? If I want one cup of tomatoes, I need the amount per one tomatoes. So I'm going to divide. I'll take the amount of olive oil divided by the amount of tomatoes, which in this situation is seven. What amount would I get? Four divided by seven is just four sevenths. Go ahead and answer the second question. Did you get the same answer for the first and second blank? How are they different? Go ahead and check your work with mine here. If you were wondering how many points this question would be worth, it would be worth two points. If they had added something about showing your work or explaining, it would have been worth three. For this problem, you need to find all of the car companies where there would be no more than $17 spent per day. Go ahead and answer the question on your own and check back here for the answer in a moment. A and B are the only correct answers. Go ahead and tell me, what would be the rate per day for option C? 
And what would be the rate per day for option E? Go ahead and answer the last two questions in your packet, silent and solo. Finish this up and then go to the next slide. You are all done with your video lesson. Please log into the Illuminate app, take your math exit ticket, hashtag 10 days. Make sure that your packet is turned in with your name on it and work. You know that I'll be looking at this when I return on Monday.